since the shooting at Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School, there's been a lot of talk about gun control and mental health. Tonight, we look at how some schools prepare for the unthinkable, an active shooter. Ludlow Public Schools have been using a program called Alice Training, which breaks from the traditional lockdown method that many districts use. Carolee McGrath sat down with Ludlow Superintendent Todd Gazda and Ludlow Police Lieutenant Michael Brennan to learn more. ALICE is basically an acronym and it stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter and Evacuate. And what it really is is a response option system for dealing with violent intruders or you know active killers or shooters. Um, and what it is, it's a, it's a step beyond the traditional lockdown model which kind of has its uh, genesis with uh, duck and cover. If you go back to, um, you know, years ago, Cold War era, um, and it was designed, basically lockdown was to keep uh, students and staff safe in school for uh, incidents that are happening outside of the school. And it's still effective, and it's obviously part of the acronym in terms of, you know, keeping people safe from threats outside of school. But what happens when the threat is inside school? Uh, we, we need a better model or a better plan. This is something a little bit unique for this area because most of the time you do hear about lockdown. You hear about uh, kids in school doing the drills, you know, preparing for, God forbid, an active shooter, but it usually turns to the lockdown. Why did you decide to go in this direction? Well, in taking a look at our current procedures and how we respond or we're trained to respond to any given uh, situation which might arise, uh, we felt that there was something missing. And so we began to research and look at programs that were out there. The Alice program was one that we felt fit our needs with, with respect to ensuring to the best extent possible the safety of our student population. I would say that the majority of schools have moved away from the traditional lockdown to some type of enhanced um, you know, lockdown procedure or response to an active intruder. So as opposed to just locking down, let's say there's an intruder in the front of the building, comes through the main office, but your classroom is on the other side of the building. Do the teachers have the autonomy to say, kids, we're getting out of here? That's exactly it. So, you know, with traditional lockdown, that was started as a command to do something. And in and, and, and that model, there was really no other information being sent. You know, teachers were locking down the, the, you know, maybe closing and locking the door, turning off the lights, and that was about it, maybe hiding. Um, this now tells teachers not just, hey, there's an intruder in the, in the, in the building. Um, a lockdown came in may be given as a, as a starting point, but that tells me as a teacher I can evacuate. I can go right to the E in the in that ALICE acronym, which I think is important to note about the acronym. It's not a linear progression or progressive steps. Teachers and students understand that, hey, if there's, a, if there's an intruder or a threat in the building and I'm on the far side of the building and I'm not near the office, I can get out of here and not lock myself down with the threat. But let's talk about the counter component of it as well. Mm -hmm. Does that mean if the threat is, is right in front of you that you encourage the teachers to fight? What do you do, what does counter mean? Um, so like, uh, I think a lot of people hear the counter and they associate that directly with fighting. Um, counter can be everything. I mean, evacuation is kind of like a, a counter in and of itself. Um, basically what that is is to, uh, distract or in other ways just throw the throw the person or the attacker off balance. How do you do that? Give me an example. Like what are you telling the teachers to do? Well, anything from, you know, creating noise, um, you know, you have uh, if a fire alarm is pulled or something like that, um, you're going to have that kind of noise going on. Um, you know, barricading the doors if you're too close to the threat, if you can't evacuate, you know, barricading the doors as best you can. Um, uh, even uh, we even talk about how to escape out of windows if possible. So all these different things are counter. It's not just fighting, but it's distraction. It distraction. sounds like the biggest thing mm -hmm. to take somebody right. You it's know. Sort of interrupting their decision making process. Everybody has a, a a way of how they they react and act to certain si situations. And, a, and an attacker coming in, he's got something on his mind and he, what he wants to do. If you can kind of interrupt that cycle of the decision making cycle, you can you can create uh, just additional time for you to maybe escape or, or barricade. And buy time as and buy far time. as the and, police. And that's you know, the biggest thing. You're responding. buying time for the for the police to get there and hopefully interrupt um, the attacker. How do the teachers feel about this? You know, it, it was a, a learning process and uh, there was definitely a learning curve with it. You know, there's immediate uncomfortableness to, um, you know, this idea. There's a certain amount of um, 
you know, a comfort level that comes where, you know, knowing specifically if this happens, this is what I do. Um, and so it's almost becomes like a reflective response. Okay. Intruder in the building lockdown. It's easy. It's easy to remember. Uh, it's, it's good for command and control uh, of, you know, the population, but it, in all circumstances, it, it wasn't the best option to keep our kids safe. And so as we went through the training, and now we've been, I think we're almost four years or five years almost yeah. into it, um, and we train new staff up in these procedures as they come on board, they've gotten used to it and to some extent feel empowered and now feel that they have you know, the ability to know what to do in different situations to respond to keep our kids safe. There's certainly a lot of talk about school security across the country, and of course it brings in the whole um, issue of gun control. But aside from mm. that, a few ideas have been floated. One, arming teachers, and you say to that? No. Okay. Uh, I don't believe arming teachers would make our, our students safe or schools safer. Uh, there are other actions that we could take, uh, other resources we could use that would make our schools safer. So I'd like to go on that. Yes. Let's say you had the option of putting a armed security guard or a police officer, former military who's trained in every school. Would you take it? You know, when I look at, you know, putting armed people in buildings, uh, I, I really look to the training that those individuals have. I am fully in support of the school resource officer program. Um, not every police officer um, has the skills necessary to be a, a school resource officer. There's a certain personality that you're looking for, a certain, a certain approach, and there's a lot of training that goes along with that. So am I in uh, support of putting resource officers in, in schools? Most certainly. Every school, even the elementary schools. You know, one of those things is it's always a balancing test. And, you know, it's, you know, where is the money going to come from? Uh, the schools right now, I mean, we still, we always say we have limited resources right. and we're making the best with what we can do with what we are given. Uh, if all of a sudden the federal government was to get behind a program uh, to help fund and support resource officers in schools, I'd be more than in favor of putting resource officers. So this in. is a conversation that I'm sure that will continue and I'm sure you'll be having in it your is. own community with a lot of parents who have uh, so many concerns. We really appreciate you coming in. Our pleasure.